much. How's it going? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you so much for... <laughs> I know you have a busy schedule as well. <laughs> um, so could you please start off by introducing yourself and giving kind of like a brief background of Luxmi's and like what your overall mission is? Yes. So my name is Anna Bjorkenwald. Um, originally from Sweden. That's where this funky last name is coming from. Uh, so I'm the CEO of Luxme. It's a clean beauty, social impact uh, skincare brand. Uh, and we launched about um, five years ago uh, as one of the first clean or the first um, fair, fair trade uh, social impact skincare brands we launched at Sephora. Um, and it was launched and created by the late humanitarian Laila Jana um, just before COVID hit. Um, got appointed by the board to um, take take over as unfortunately Lila Jana passed away from cancer at the beginning of January of this year. So it's definitely been an interesting ride for us. Um, but yeah, I think this is the this is the market for and the time, the perfect time for social impact brands in general and brands committed to creating better uh, and a positive difference in the world. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about like the history behind the company and how the idea originated? Because I know Lila actually visited Uganda, right? If I'm not wrong. Uh, yeah, so could you talk a little bit about that as well? Yes, of course. So Lila Jana, she started, she was a serial entrepreneur, a really badass, interesting young um, female entrepreneur. So she started her first company in her early 20s. And it was a tech AI company called Samasource, which is still around. Um, and they work with clients such as Google, Microsoft, Tesla, and essentially they, they place computer centers in rural parts of Africa and train um, women and young adults how, just to get basic computer skills. So, for example, image annotation uh, for self-driving cars for Tesla, uh, they outsource that to these, to these computer centers. So she was traveling around in rural parts of Africa a lot and discovered um, Nilotica. There's really cool ingredients at a ingredient at a local market. And Nilotica is essentially this nut that grows wild on trees along the Nile River. But because of um, a lot of civil war that was raging in the in the region for for decades, this ingredient never got exported to the West. But she she discovered us and saw the transformative effect. It had on her own skin and just thought, wow, I need to start another company around this. And that's how Luxme uh, was founded. Hi from Richardson Falls in the beautiful Nile River Valley. So since you source your ingredients from uh, Uganda, like, could you tell us uh, about like the societal impact that you're making and how you're kind of bringing change? Yes. So social impact from a clean beauty standpoint in our case means that we're sourcing them um, rare, rare botanicals such as Nilotica from these rural regions working with women and fair trade cooperatives so we provide um, work to underprivileged women to harvest these rare botanicals because research show, shows that uh, giving a woman a work giving a woman work uh, she tends to reinvest about 90 percent of her paycheck into um, the education, healthcare, and well-being of her family and her community. So the impact really spreads really far. But then also, apart from just giving uh, work to these uh, local women, we also give them a financial incentive to the local communities to preserve um, the local biodiversity. So all of the nature and the trees and these plants in the region. So what that does as well is that it stops habitat loss for um, for for the local wildlife, for animals, but at the same time also then the deforestation and the desertification in the regions get, gets halted. So that has a really positive impact on climate change, for example. So we've partnered with um, non environmental nonprofit Conservation International and this tribe in the Amazon jungle in Suriname. Uh, and through the sourcing project, we're protecting um, 235,000 football fields of Amazon jungle. So it's a really cool, empowering uh, message for the individual consumer as well to say, 
just by getting ready in the morning, you're already helping underprivileged women and local communities. You're protecting these rare botanicals that have been used by indigenous communities for generations, and you're protecting the environment. So it's a really cool, it's a really cool concept in that way. That, that's incredible. You're targeting so many issues just through one initiative. <laughs> so what are some of like the greatest challenges that you uh, come across throughout your journey? And I know you probably have a lot of responsibilities, so there has to be like some road bumps along the way. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think obviously for me, the the start of my, my role as a CEO for the company was definitely not an easy one. So as I mentioned, Lila, she got diagnosed with cancer and passed away at the end of January. And then um, right around, around that time, uh, the board then asked me if I wanted uh, to officially take that on as you know, the, the role of the CEO, even though I had been running the, um, the company kind of behind the scenes while uh, Lila was focusing on her health. But first, and to you know, deal with the emotional, um, the emotional effect of her passing, she was, a, you know, she was a tremendous human being, but also a mentor and friend to me. And then from there, getting thrown into a CEO role two weeks before this global pandemic of COVID-19 hit. And then obviously in that way, maneuvering a brand that was very strongly tied to Lila's profile and her legacy, honoring that in the best way possible, while obviously dealing just emotionally with that turmoil myself, but then also being there for the team and being able to lead the company through this really um, challenging transition. It, it hasn't been an easy ride, but I think, I believe that there's a space as well for the authenticity and, and leadership and um, being vulnerable and, you know, just admitting when things are, are rough and being part of it together. I mean, hats off to you. Honestly, I feel like if Lala was here, she would be so proud of everything you've accomplished. So keep up the great work. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I know. I know she's smiling down on us, and just just eager would have wanted to be part of us at this level as well. But yeah, I feel I feel tremendously honored to um, to get this trust from the board and also from from her, knowing that she had already, in a way, handed over the company to me. So just continuing and yeah, just building on her legacy and this vision that we shared together. So what are some of like, the greatest accomplishments you've had so far? And uh, what are your future plans as well? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, obviously the, the team, like I said, it's been, it's been a challenge for us to, to move through this emotionally, physically, and you know, organizationally on all levels. Uh, we've definitely had a lot of good wins um, since, you know, since that, all of those things happened. Uh, we're really proud to have been picked up by um, you know, big retailers such as Nordstrom. We're already with Sephora. We're growing, we're growing the brand a lot, also worldwide. Um, even just recently, we got picked up by the, the spa at uh, Richard Branson's Necker Island. Um, and it's really, you know, it's really quite the honor in that way because places like that are used to working with nothing but the best brands. And for them then to, you know, Trust and believe in what we do is is a really great honor, but it's it's absolutely a, a team effort in that way. So I'm very happy to to yeah have have the world believe in us in a way. Because it makes me feel like I'm Cleopatra every single morning when I wake up. It's one of those products that I can't wait to put on every morning because it just feels and smells so good. So what made you pick Lux Me? I, I read in an article that you're an Ironman triathlete. First of all, that's so cool. Um, so was, was your love for healthy living like a major factor? Yes, absolutely. I've always been very interested in just the, the holistic nature of our bodies and minds and souls and all of that stuff. And I think when it comes to the, the Ironman race, I was more of a um, wild challenge that I took on and luckily it went really well. Um, but I do think I've always, um, like I mentioned, been interested in that. I've, I've struggled with problematic skin my entire life. And I um, went through numerous 
painful, costly treatments and I've tried a million different products and every time, you know, there'll be a new product and glowing marketing promised me, well, promising me this, you know, clear, shiny skin. And then it just leads to a lot of disappointments and frustration and a lot of money spent, right? So I started really, you know, in kind of in conjunction with my um, Ironman training and all of that stuff, I started to really dig into what is truly well-being and what does my body truly need? Um, then I just, yeah, like started really looking at clean beauty and wellness in a whole different way. I met Lila. I landed a job with Luxme and it was just like, you know, the match made in heaven as well when, you know, I started testing as well our products and I, I got to experience the effects of my Lotica on my own skin and I could see my skin transform. I knew that there was no no going back from there. I do think it's a it's a brilliant way to not just treat yourself, uh, you know, and take care of yourself in the best way possible, but in the same way that take care of the world around you through your daily skincare habits. Um, so do you have any last words? Is there something else you would like to share about your experience, your greatest takeaways? Just anything you want to bring up? Yes. Um, good question. I. I would say to have patience and to not, um, it's so easy, especially I remember when I was in school and um, it's so easy to get kind of sidetracked by what everybody else is doing. And just to imagine like a little over 10 years ago, I came to the US uh, with two nights in a hostel and a suitcase. and started from you know the very bottom and just worked my way up and to now think that 10 years later i'm the ceo of a skincare brand working to create positive change in the world it's just i i get amazed by that myself and in that way i see that i didn't necessarily have the most linear path um there's there's so many more ways to reach where you want to where you want to go and it's easy to get kind of stressed by oh i need to go to the school i need to get this type of job i need to do xyz in a very linear path but it doesn't have to happen always that way if you're committed to what you want to do and you give it your heart and soul there's way more that you can accomplish than than on which potentially you might great thank you so much uh it's really incredible the amount of success your team has made. It's been five years, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Yeah, so the yes, exactly. So the company launched um, yeah, just a little five years ago. So it it's been a amazing. fast journey. Yeah, I'm excited to see all the amazing things you have lined up for your customers in the future. Thank you so much. Yes, me too. We'll see. <laughs> Listen for you. I'll, I'll be curious to see what you take on. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time again. Thank you. Thank you.